How's it going everyone? Thanks for checking out this new Smart Material video. My name is Dylan Abernathy and I'm an environment artist working here in the games industry. So a while back I released a simple Smart Material for Substance Painter here that helps streamline the process of creating stickers within the program. Uh, while this worked fine, it was hard to make edits and I left the users with a little bit more cleanup work than I think is necessary. So what I wanted to do today is share with you my Sticker Creator 2, which is just an improvement across the board on that first iteration. So with this version, the process has been streamlined to allow artists to just stamp things on really quickly and get back to the artistic part of the process as soon as possible. And I've been doing this utilizing uh, anchor points. So let's go ahead and bring that in here and see exactly how it's done. So if I scroll down a bit, we're going to be looking for the Sticker Creator 2, which we can find right here. I'm just going to drag this smart material on, and as you can see, it's going to be bringing on a few layers along with it. Uh, these are going to be the sticker application. This is where uh, we're going to be stamping our stuff on and making a few edits to the wear and tear. Uh, the height level and roughness, which is self-explanatory, we can affect those uh, with this layer here. We have the sticker glue and paper, which is just going to be sort of assisting with the tear effect, and we can edit those uh, case by case as well. And then we have foil on top if we want sort of a, a hollow foil look. Um, in a lot of cases, I think this is not really going to be used, but if you want something a little bit more artistic or a bit more fun, uh, it's going to be cool. But in this case, I'm going to turn it off for now and we can save that for the end. So we're going to start off at the bottom and work our way up, uh, starting with the sticker application. Um, if you're not sure exactly uh, how to set up your brush for this, I always recommend going to the brush. And if we go to basic hard, this is just going to make things as simple as possible, just a standard hard brush. Um, from there, I'm going to make sure I can find the files I brought in. So I'm going to go to project and I brought in a few sticker examples. So I already have this imported. So I just brought my base color over here and then I have a corresponding alpha for this, which I'm going to bring into the alpha. Um, from there, uh, we don't really want any metallic values. I'm going to turn that down, but it's important to override this stuff in the background. Uh, no height information, roughness, we're going to be affecting layer, uh, later, so we really don't have to worry about all of that. And I'm just going to stamp this on here. So we have a name tag. And the nice thing about this version, unlike the last one, is we can just stamp as many as we want. Uh, this layer doesn't really have a limit. We don't have to really worry with the UVs. We can just quickly put this on. And maybe you're already happy with that. Maybe you're like, damn, there's our sticker. It's in place. We're good to go. Um, but there's a lot more we can do to this to make it... Uh, really bump up the quality. Before we do that, let's just bring on a few more examples of stickers. So I'm going to bring on something a little bit more decorative, something a little chibi. And then we can also bring on something a little bit more useful for games, like a warning sign, something that you'd see a little bit more traditionally. So let's stamp that on there as well. So we have a few things going on here. Uh, let's go over what else we can do with the sticker application layer. So the main thing that we're really going to be doing is going to be adding the wear and tear here. Um, so I can click on this. It's going to bring us to our mask where it says add wear here. Uh, for this, uh, I always recommend with the brushes to have something a little bit more contrasty when we're doing um, big chunks of wear. You can use the basic hard. That's totally fine. But I also really like this brush for this option, the Artistic Heavy Sponge. And if we turn the contrast all the way up on this and we start scratching away, it's going to give us a nice sort of worn result that I'm pretty happy with. So let's just add a little bit of damage uh, in different areas here across a few of our stickers and maybe this corner here. Someone tried to peel it off and ruined it. Uh, the nice thing about this is we can't really paint over the lines. So if you're going to be fixing something up, you can't um, overdo it. So that's something that's also a huge help. But uh, let's quickly scratch off maybe a corner here. And uh, a big corner here. You can always paint back in a little bit more if we think we overdid it. But I think this, for now, should get the point across. So that on its own is already starting to look a little bit better. We have this sort of torn paper underneath um, and a little bit of glue around the edges. So let's sort of move on to the next layer, which is the height and roughness. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, with the height, we can really just sort of crank this up. We can turn it down. Um, 
This is going to be a case by case, depending on how big the asset is or how much UV space this is occupying your resolution and stuff like that. But just feel free to adjust this if you think you want to turn it up a little bit more. Uh, in this case, I think I am going to turn it up a little bit more since this is um, kind of taking up a lot of space on the asset. And then there's also some default roughness that's applied to our uh, stickers. This is going to be driven by a roughness grunge, which we can turn on and off and also affect the intensity. Uh, as well as a base roughness, which we can quickly just sort of adjust the slider. Um, I just like a little bit of variation on there so it's not too boring, um, but feel free to adjust that case by case for what you're working on, how aged things are, and the environment that it's gonna be in. Um, moving up from there, we have two other layers that we're gonna want to affect, that being the paper and the sticker glue. These kind of go hand in hand. So we can already see the paper and the glue under here. Let's start with the paper since that's on top. Um, there's a few things that we could want to adjust in here. So the first thing I'm going to bring up is the paper rip amount. Uh, we can quickly sort of drag the slider to see how much the paper is being ripped if we want to adjust that um, on a global scale. I kind of like the value it's at by default. Um, we can also see that the paper always is cut in a little bit to leave this sort of glue around the end. If we don't like that, we can go to the bevel here and just sort of adjust this to go right to the edge. Um, you have control over that, so feel free to make those adjustments if you need to. I might pull it out a little bit more. Uh, and then finally, we have the make paper edits here, which as the name might suggest, we can sort of go in and start to uh, mask things out a little bit more. This is a time where I think you can add a little bit of opacity in here and get away with it to make it look like it's really been worn down over time. Maybe a little bit less here. And you can paint back in without going out of the uh, the original edges as well. So it's just really designed to be as easy as possible to use. Let's get rid of a little bit of paper here, make it a little bit more damaged. And it just gives us that control um, if we wanna have it uh, mostly ripped up, but then we can also paint in areas where it's additionally ripped up as well. And that brings us to the next layer, which is going to be the sticker glue, which is the sort of final bottom layer of things. So this is just going to be a bit of a, a rough, darker patch around everything that shows that this is the original silhouette of the sticker. Um, mainly the only real changes that we're gonna to wanna to make here is where it says add edits here. Um, and we can just sort of paint away some glue if we think that this has been here a long time, uh, it's really been worn down, or if you just wanna use a little bit of opacity to add a bit of breakup and how solid it is. And just like before, you can't paint in over the original silhouette. So you really don't have to be worrying about anything like that. It's just designed to be super easy to use. Um, so that's pretty much it for the basics of the sticker. There's two more things to really go over here that I think uh, adds a little bit more customization on top of things. If we go back to the sticker application layer and click on this uh, original place where we stamped our um, designs, we have a hand added detail section. This is in case you want to sort of draw some stuff on. I found in this case, for example, I might want to draw a name on here um, or maybe add graffiti onto something without having to sort of go back and change things in Photoshop before I stamp them on. So let's go ahead and find a marker brush. Uh, from here, I'm just going to change the base color to something pretty dark like black, uh, bring the metallic value up and the roughness low and let's just see how this is turning out. I can just sort of quickly type something in here. Uh, hello, my name is Sticker Creator 2. So you just sort of have that option if you want to put this on here. The reason it's nice to have this directly on this layer is because if we then want to go into the add wear section and let's go back to our nice brush, uh, we can actually chip this off and it's going to be coming along um, with the sort of main um, sticker that we stamped on before. So we don't have to worry about sort of lining things up with the masks. It's all going to be included and uh, it's nice to just sort of have that option there. And finally, the last thing that we have that I mentioned before is the foil. So I'm turning this on and you immediately notice uh, sort of a pattern overlay on top of everything. Uh, in a lot of cases, this isn't going to be the most useful for a lot of stickers, but for something maybe like this, where it's a, a bit more of a design, something a bit more decorative, it could be nice to have. So what this is 
essentially doing is just sort of taking a pattern, adding some metallic value to it and overlaying it. So the only real changes that we're gonna make here is to the add pattern here. Um, we can of course sort of change the tile of things. Uh, it's just overlaying it so it's including the color underneath. Um, pretty useful, we can change the pattern maybe to something else like this, something a little bit more minimalistic. And then we sort of have an option to add details here. If we turn this on, we can just sort of erase uh, where we don't want details. So maybe on the face here, we can get rid of that. Uh, but pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, once again, it's an optional layer. So if you have a bunch of stickers, maybe you don't want it on most of them. We can scratch these off and just have it on the little chibi in the corner there. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Really quick to add stickers, really quick to add some damage and erase it. Uh, Non-destructive, we can just sort of go back and paint things in on top. And as you can see, the results are looking pretty good. We're getting some good variation on top of everything and it took no time at all. So there's gonna be a link to this in the description below. If you wanna check it out, feel free to find the link to my Gumroad where you can pick this up. And if you want similar results for free, uh, I have the original sticker creator, which is also gonna be down there. And that is a free pickup on Gumroad. It's a little bit harder to use, but we'll get you similar results. So hopefully you guys found this useful. Thank you so much for checking this out. Uh, once again, my name is Dylan Abernathy and have a good time using some stickers in Substance Painter. Have a great day, everyone.